why are these orphans rejoicing? Because gifts to the dorms for Orphanages Fund of Heaven's Family have provided them with new homes. Well, it's great to be back together again as we are continuing our chronological study through the New Testament. And we're going back into Matthew once again, right into the heart of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. So if you've got your Bible, why don't you turn to Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 1. While you're doing that, I'll just give a real quick review because it's so important always to look at the context of any scripture that you study. And we're reading in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Remember that uh, back in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 20, Jesus told his disciples who had gathered there on the mountainside to listen to him that unless their righteousness exceeded that of the scribes and Pharisees, they would not enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, of course, that was a real shocker to anybody who had any respect for the spiritual leaders of the day, the scribes and Pharisees. And, and, and Jesus uh, alleviated a little bit of the shock by then helping everybody in his audience to understand exactly, precisely how that their righteousness could and should exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. I think it was six or seven times there after he said that uh, about the scribes and Pharisees, he used a statement over and over again, you have heard that it was said. And then he would quote what the scribes and Pharisees had been teaching, their twistings of the scripture, and then he straightened it out. Remember, Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. Oh, no, 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 I came to fill it to the full. And that's what he'll be doing throughout the rest of this sermon as well. And the theme hasn't changed, okay? We're gonna see that he's making a direct a reference to the scribes and Pharisees right here at the beginning of Matthew chapter 6 and the first couple of verses. All right, so let's go ahead and read Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, all right? And then we'll back up. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. Now, let's just stop right there and comment on verse number two. Everybody knew who Jesus was talking about when he talked about those who were sounding the trumpet before them. That was not just uh, an expression on Jesus' part. That was a reality. Uh, people, probably the scribes and Pharisees, most likely the spiritual leaders, the, the rich ones, would periodically go out on the streets and actually hire someone to you know, blow a trumpet to ostensibly let the poor know that there was going to be a distribution <clears throat> to those who, who needed some extra cash. And, and Jesus said, really, they're only doing it just so that everybody will see how generous they are and how righteous they are. They're not doing it because they love their neighbor as themselves. They're not doing it because they love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. They're doing it because they love God themselves. And so really, their goodness, their righteousness was not, nothing more than just selfishness, really, and hypocrisy. See, God wants us to be pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, Jesus already said earlier on in this sermon. He wants our holiness not just to be a veneer of holiness, like the Pharisees and scribes, who he said are like whitewashed tombs. Outside they look clean, inside they're full of dead man's bones. No, he wants us to be pure inside. In fact, he wants the purity that uh, we see on the outside, the good deeds that uh, come forth from us, they should emanate from a heart that is pure. So holy Holiness really doesn't start from the inside and work its way uh, outside, rather than work its way in. Holiness, God's holiness, starts on the inside and works its way out. God changes our hearts. Now, uh, I just want to reference one other scripture to you here. This is in Matthew chapter 3, where Jesus, Matthew rather, chapter 23, where it's an entire chapter where Jesus is basically condemning and criticizing the, the scribes and the Pharisees, repeatedly calling them hypocrites and snakes and 
broods of vipers and so on and so forth. And uh, he says in Matthew 23 and verse number five, specifically about the scribes and Pharisees, check the context in verse number two, but in verse number five of Matthew 23, Jesus says, but they do all their deeds to be noticed by men. There it is. And so, again, let's go back now to Matthew chapter 6. This is what Jesus is, is warning against, imitating the scribes and the Pharisees who were doing everything they did to be seen by men. And that was manifest in one way when they gave to the poor. And so Jesus says, don't be like them. But as he said that, when he said, don't, you know, when you give to the poor, don't, don't sound a, a trumpet before you like the hypocrites do, again, it's a direct uh, a front to the spiritual leaders of the day, the scribes and the Pharisees. And so everybody was, everyone knew it. This is, this is a sermon about how to make sure your righteousness goes beyond the scribes and Pharisees. And how can you do that in terms of giving to the poor? You can do that by giving secretly, making sure that other people, you know, you're not advertising what you're doing. You know, you could take the letter of this law and say you're obeying it fully, but completely miss the spirit of it. You know, you could, uh, you know, when I was a pastor, this would happen periodically. People would periodically bring me checks that were too big to place in the offering plate as it went by in front of everybody in the service. <laughs> you know, I felt sorry for them. I, I, I didn't have the boldness at the time, at least anyways, to correct them. How can you correct someone who's, who's giving a nice check, you know, to support the, your church? But why did it have to be given personally to the pastor? Because we want to make sure the pastor knows that we gave this big check. And so they, they'd say, well, we didn't sound any trumpets, you know, like Jesus said you shouldn't do. Uh, yeah, you, you kept the letter of the law, but you neglected, you, you know, you, 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 you didn't obey the spirit of the law. The idea is, is to make sure your motive is right in giving. You're not giving because you want the praise of anybody, whether it be your pastor or the people watching on the street or your mother-in-law. You're giving because you love your neighbor and you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, okay? So these are important things to think about and if we want our righteousness to exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees we better take it to heart okay amen I'll see you next time